This is Kim, former Phantom Blue player. How's it going with you these days? And what's your uh, new projects? Um, well, it's going pretty well, but at the moment, I don't have any new projects. I've actually um, kind of put some things on hold to take care of some personal stuff, but I'm, I'm more working on the business side of music um, for the last, gosh, I don't know, 13, 14 years now I've been in, involved in music production, um, tour production and that type of stuff, the live music side. Um, so I do that on occasion. I did, I'm not, it's not a full-time thing, but I do. My husband owns a production company, so I work with him. And then I still do the music. I, the last band I was in was Jet City Woman, which was a um, Queensryche tribute um, yeah. with Lucy Thomas on vocals, who was an um, ex-Phantom Blue member, ironically, uh -huh. who I hadn't even met until I did this project. And, um, you know, I do the occasional recording and studio, you know, venture, but um, at the moment, I don't actually have a band. <laughs> Blue thing is, is pretty much it, you know, yeah. and that's pretty much taken up all my time, you know, dealing with Phantom Blue. So you worked with Asia as a recording artist, like um, putting some bass tracks and all that stuff? Yeah, I was the only guest musician on that album, um, which they were kind enough to allow me to do. Um I know John and Jeff, I know Jeff Downs and John Payne, and uh, I was spending a lot of time with them in the studio. My husband was managing them at the time, and I became friends with them and um, used to sit in on uh, studio sessions a lot and watch um, John record and produce and write songs, and it was really kind of cool because he used to ask my input on some of the songs and... Um, it was a very interesting experience. I learned a lot about the studio from being around him. And he uh, called me one day and asked me if I wanted to play on, on the album. And I said, yeah, yeah of course. Sure. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Which is really kind of cool because I was an Asia fan when I was in high school and never ever dreamed that I would ever play with the band. So that was like a really big thrill for me. And it's a huge honor to be able to play with them. So, so yeah, that was kind of an interesting, fun little thing to do. Your husband, from if I read correctly, he's former drummer for Belladonna. Yeah, he was in Belladonna. Yeah. What year um, was this? You know, I'm not 100 percent sure. I don't really know the whole history of the band. I just know it was the early 80s. Okay. I'm I'm pretty sure. Um, he got out of playing um, music on that side, you know, and he went into the business side of music. He became a tour manager. Uh, after he left Belladonna, and um, I think he was in another band called L.O. Girls, too. I know he played with Paul Diano for a short time, um, but he went into the business side, um, found out that he was better. I mean, I won't say better. He's actually a really good drummer. He still plays, but I'm he sure. doesn't play professionally. But he's he had a real love for the business, and so he... Uh, gosh, like the last 25 years, he's been involved in the business. He he was a tour manager for the first, gosh, I don't know, 15, 18 years. And then he got into artist management, and that's what he's doing now. When are you going to make a band with him? <laughs> if he had time, I would. <laughs> he doesn't have time. Yeah, well, you know, we do get to play together on rare occasions. You know, we, we'll do covers and stuff, but he's so busy that he just yeah. doesn't have time. I mean, he, he recently just joined a covers band just to do something for fun but it's one of these things where they only gig once a month and you know they hardly rehearse so he just doesn't have time to be in a, in a band that rehearses all the time and then going to lizzie borden what's your um connection with lizzie borden i've known those guys since 1987 um i was in a band that used to rehearse in the same studio with them so that's how i met them and we used to see each other coming and going, and I became friends with them. Uh, the drummer, especially, he and I are really good friends. Um, as a matter of fact, he was the one who introduced me and my husband, because my husband was his drum tech and tour manager. Okay. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I've just I've known those guys for years. I used to hang out at their house all the time. I, you know, record with them. I used to do demos with them all the time. So it's you know I still keep in touch with them on a regular basis. As a matter of fact, we're using their studio for the rehearsal for this show. 
Did you ever uh, play on any uh, Lizzie Borden album session? This I never played on any albums. I did some pre-album demos for them um, way back in the early '90s. I think it was like around '91. I can't remember exactly what year it was. I did some recordings. I did Deal with the Devil. I, I, I played on the original version of that. And there's, um, I can't remember the names of the other songs. There were a few other songs that e eventually made it onto albums that I did the demos for before Martin Anderson joined. Because uh, Martin Anderson was also a friend of mine who I recommended for the band, and he ended up joining the band later on. Mm -hmm. Did you ever meet Joe Holmes as a guitarist for uh, Lizzie Borden? I never actually met him. I, I knew who he was, but I never actually met him, which is really kind of strange. He was never around when I was around. I'm, I kind of dealt more with Joey and Lizzie because they're the core of the band. You know, I was you know, mostly like in the studio with them, so I never did actually meet Joe Holmes face to face. So he would have been still a mystery guy that and back yeah, in them it, days like he is today. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's like I, you know, it's funny. I knew Corey when Corey was in the band. I knew, uh, um, oh gosh, I'm trying to think of the other guy's name. There's another Joe Steele and and all the other guys, but Joe Holmes was the one who I never met. It was just really strange. That is interesting. <laughs> it's kind of he was like this elusive guy, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> wow, and you know, today we can't find him at all on the internet. I didn't know that. No. Yeah, he's very okay. uh, rare guy to find today wow i didn't know that yeah i guess he doesn't want to be found <laughs> i don't know i can only speculate you cited that pete way is one of your musical influences yeah one one of many but yeah not to date myself but i started playing in the 70s and ufo is one of my all-time favorite bands okay so you're a big ufo fan yeah yeah know all their songs and you know, I like, I'm a big fan of that style of bass playing, that the very 70s style. Um, so it's kind of, I just grew up listening to him. He's one of many. I mean, the, the whole reason I started playing bass was because of bands like Kiss. Mm -hmm. You know, Gene Simmons basically was the catalyst for me even, you know, deciding to play bass. So I was kind of into that whole scene, you know, the, the mid to late 70s. As a Pete Way fan, did you ever uh, follow his uh, career in Ozzy Osbourne? For a sh short no, stint. I didn't. You know, it's funny. I I only knew of what he did in UFO. I did. I have on occasion heard about some of his side bands. Um, I was in a band called Wraith back in 1996 who worked with Pete Way um, on a production basis, and you know, I'd heard little things about him. You know, over the years, you know, that he had done, but I hadn't really followed any really closely followed him i was more familiar with his stuff he did in ufo mm -hmm. i tend to follow bass players in context with what they're doing it's, i don't like isolate them as a player so much i i'm more in, interested in what they're doing in context with the song you know it's it's kind of like it's not just them that i'm following it's usually the band that they're playing in and the era and all that stuff yeah i mean a lot of things you know influence me it's not just the player it's you know the, the overall sound and because i'm more song oriented i'm not one of these type of players that's really into soloing and and technical stuff i i'm more interested in players in their individual style and, and what they have to offer as an individual and um and how they they deal with that in a song context i kind of like to look at the whole picture basically mm -hmm. he is a good uh, bassist actually very good bassist. Oh, yeah, he, yeah, he is. Just so he's like not... I said, his style is very indicative of that time period, of the, you know, the, the mid to late 70s. And he's not a bassist that's mentioned too much, you know, today as an influence. That's why I picked that out and said, hmm, that's an interesting uh, guy. I know well, him. No, yeah, he's, he's not because a lot of the players now tend to go, I mean, a lot of people that I know, other bass players, tend to look at the more technical guys. They're They're intrigued by... The guys that do these like really impossible things that are like, you know, difficult to pull off, which is really cool. But I guess I, I went through that phase when I was younger. I thought, you know, I was into like Billy Sheehan and all that kind of stuff, uh, you know, Stu Ham and and everything. But now I've kind of gone back to my roots of where I started in the first place and the whole vibe, you know, of 
like I said, I, I'm heavily influenced by the 70s thing. That's where a lot of my, I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's 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 like a certain feeling, you know. It's right. not even really as a, it's a little bit of a sound, but it's more of a feeling than anything. I'm very nostalgic, I guess. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> to go back to today's time, you're playing the show May 26th. How many uh, rehearsals you guys got in for Phantom four. Blue? Um, unfortunately, we are only going to get to do four days rehearsal uh-huh. beforehand because um, that's all anybody has time for. The other girls are all in other bands and have other things going on, so they're taking time out of their busy schedule to do this. But um, And Gigi, of course, is flying in from another state, so she's got limited time that she can be here. So we're just going to get in there and just do it. I don't anticipate any problems. We, we're all, we all still play, so there's no rustiness there. You know, Hopefully we'll just be able to jump right into it. Is the show going to be filmed? I believe it is. I'm not 100% sure, but I vaguely recall somebody mentioning that they were going to film it. I, I believe that Robert John's going to film it, who's a um, very famous rock photographer. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, hopefully, because hopefully it will be. They were going to provide all the bands with a copy of it. Maybe make yeah, a big so release of it. Yeah, so hopefully it'll end up on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, on YouTube, too. The Michelle Meldrum, did you follow her career as Meldrum? I didn't follow it. I'm, I'm familiar with it because I did keep in touch with her. She also worked a lot with my husband um, because her my husband's co-manager of Motorhead. Mm-hmm. And um, she toured, her band toured a lot with Motorhead. So I'm vaguely familiar with what she's done. I've seen her play live once. I, I went to one of her shows and have seen some of the videos on the Internet and stuff like that. So... I'm not like totally familiar with it, but I'm like they, you know, I know the general overview of what she was doing, basically. So very heavy stuff they're going with. Gene Hoagland on drums. Oh yeah, yeah, very, very heavy. Uh, I mean, I saw her live before she died, and the band was amazing. They were really, really good. Um, I saw her at the NAMM show, and I think it was 2000. Seven, I believe, and I was just blown away. Really good band. Phantom Blue was a very good band, also, in when you were in the lineup. And uh, well, thank you. You think there's more videos that are gonna surface on YouTube someday? I don't know. I hope so, because there's probably a lot out there I don't have copies of <laughs> that I'd like to have copies of. I, I collect everything that we've done, and um, I discovered some things on YouTube I didn't even know existed. And so, most of the things I already had, but there were a couple things there that I didn't, well, that's good. you know, had copies of. Is there much stuff you're missing still? Uh, probably. I mean, I know there's a lot of things that we did that I never actually got to see the finished product on. So, you know, maybe those things will resurface eventually. I don't know. You know, it's, uh, YouTube is great. I mean, YouTube is, um, you know, really good for researching stuff and, you know, seeing things that you've never seen before. Yeah. So I, I'm really happy that fans are putting things up on there because, like I said, I, I you know, like for instance, the live show in um, Utrecht, Holland, when we that song "Walking Away," I didn't even know that was being filmed. Nobody had even told me that show was being filmed. So that was a new one. Cause everything else I remember doing, but I don't remember that one. <laughs> in 15 years, voila, it's online. Yeah, it, it's funny because I can remember every photo sh- session we did every almost every radio and TV and magazine interview we did, but I don't recall that one. I remember the show. I don't remember it being filmed. It's really kind of odd, actually. So you mentioned your husband's co-manager of Motorhead. How many bands does he manage at this time? Uh, Right now he just is doing Motorhead and Thin Lizzy. Thin Lizzy is his own band. Uh, Motorhead he co-manages with Todd Singerman. Must be a very busy guy. Very busy, yes. When you mentioned Motorhead, I'm thinking, wow, this guy's doing everything. Yeah, yeah, no, both bands are very, very time-consuming. Motorhead tours, I mean, he handles all the live side of their career, and so, I know, Motorhead's touring about 80% of the year. So, yeah, he is very busy. What type of basses do you like, and is there basses you never owned that you like to have? Um, Or are you just straightforward, you know, bass type? 
Um, you know, it's funny. I haven't seen too much out there right now. I mean, I tend to go to all the trade shows and stuff and to see what's new, and it's been a bit, to be honest, a bit boring the last few years. There hasn't really been anything really that exciting. It's just been kind of the same stuff over and over again. I tend to stick with a lot of the same things. I mean, I've been playing the same basses for years and years. I, I think I've won new bass that I got about a year ago. Um, I have mostly old ESPs that they don't make anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, the same, that purple one that I played in the Time to Run video, that was my workhorse for years and years. And I've recently retired that one and got a, a five-string version of it, which are quite rare, actually. I had to really search around for one because I didn't make that many of them. And that's my main instrument now is my five-string ESP Horizon. Um, I also have a, a brand-new carbon five-string that I play that um, I haven't even taken it out of the house yet. It'll, it'll probably, I'll probably play it at this show coming up. Good. And then I've, uh, you know, a six-string Samic Valley Arts model. I've got uh, two five-string acoustic basses, a, a short scale and a long scale. My old four strings that were in all the Phantom Blue videos, I still have. Um, I've got, I think I have like seven or eight basses. So <laughs> I, I can't keep track anymore, but so I'm getting new ones all so the time. So you're going to be playing a five-string bass for Phantom Blue? Yes. Yeah, I play... I pretty much play five string all the time as a matter of fact i haven't touched a four in a few years so yeah i'm pretty much exclusively a five string player and, and i may even venture into six here pretty soon so because uh, <laughs> well, i'm getting bored and i want to try something new <laughs> then then 12 well no i'm not a big fan of the 12 i i don't i've kind of gotten away from anything that resembles a four string all right um uh, i like the five string because i like the string spacing on it better um I like the wider neck, and I like the strings closer together because I have small hands. Mm-hmm. But um, the five pretty much works for everything because I was doing the Queen's Reich stuff for a while, so I had to play five for that. Pretty much everything that I've done in the last probably ten years or so, I've had to play a five string for. So that's kind of how I got into it. Is it going to change the sound? With the five string for the phantom yeah, blue material. Yeah, I like the sound. It's a different. It's a different playing technique, which I prefer. Mm-hmm. It's a much. It's actually much more efficient than a four string in the way that you play it. Um, I like playing five string detuned. As well, I do like alternative tunings on it. I just feel like I have more freedom with a five string. And when I go back to a four, I feel extremely limited. It's like I'm like something's missing. So. I, I like the heavier sound of the five string as well. Any uh, projects that we're going to see in the next five years? Well, I don't have anything planned yet. I have ideas in my head, but they're still ideas at this stage. So, you know, I'll probably be looking to put together another band um, soon. But I, at this point, it's all just in an idea phase. I don't know exactly who I'm going to get for that yet. So it's a, a bit too soon to tell. I will be out there playing <laughs> well, <laughs> one way or another. You, and, uh, I'm, a, I'm like a restless soul. I have to keep playing. I, you know, it's just not an option for me to I'm not do it. I'm sure you're going to enjoy the gig May uh, 26 in California. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to it. It'll be a lot of fun. It'll be great to play with the girls again, actually. We're looking forward to see those videos on YouTube and uh, see you playing in the reunion show. Yeah, well, me too. <laughs> okay, well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. All right, bye. bye.